2011. And that's when he's like, enough's enough. We're going to take it to the Americans in Libya. And that's what he chose to do. It was actually a kidnapping operation of the ambassador because they brought in 150 terrorists just for the ambassador's kidnapping. I don't know if you actually know why they didn't leave till 10.05. Why? Well, this is what I really want to talk about, mm -hmm. is some of the, I don't know what you would call it, if it's corruption or, or just incompetence that happened, you know, during the attack, some of the cover-up stuff. I wanted to talk about it with Mark. It's, 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 it's tough, you know, to talk about that stuff mm -hmm. with somebody that was there um, that experienced that amount of trauma. So I thought you would be the, the best thing to mm -hmm. bring in. And so could you kind of walk us through some of the stuff that could have really helped the guys on the ground there that we didn't utilize and some of the stuff that happened after Benghazi? Sure. Maybe I should talk about the size of the attack first. Okay. Because it's really easy for a, like someone who doesn't tote a gun to say, oh, these things could have helped the guys. But when you talk about the number of attackers, the people really need to understand like what they were up against, okay. right? So, so the attack was directed by the head of al-Qaeda, Dr. Ayman al-Zawahiri. He basically handed off to his North Africa... Um, group, right? So AQIM is what we'll go by. And the purpose of it was, was to capture Ambassador Stevens. And they wanted to use him for prison swaps, like to get other terrorists out. And it was going to be an honor of a couple Libyans that we killed in drone stripes in Pakistan. So Zawahiri's last two deputies, um, the most recent was Abu Yaqia al-Libi. His last two deputies died in drone strikes within a year um, in Pakistan. So when the second drone strike happened, it was June 2011. And that's when he's like, enough's enough. We're going to take it to the Americans in Libya. And that's what he chose to do. It was actually a kidnapping operation of the ambassador because in 2011, a ton of terrorists got released. And so by 2012, they're like, hey, it was kind of almost like this momentum going. And they're like, hey, let's keep trying to get out who we can get out um, and save more people. Um, even Al-Qaeda had just also in Benghazi, and this is never talked about, which is strange, like within just maybe three weeks before the attacks, they kidnapped the only Quds Force officers in Benghazi as well. And they're asking for five Al-Qaeda in Iraq detainees who were held in Iraq. So five Al-Qaeda members in Iraq. So it just happened weeks before. So now they're doing kind of the same thing, but they're capturing the U.S. ambassador because... One of the interesting things is one of the p names they wanted to put on the plate for the Cuts Force, he didn't make the cut, right? They weren't good enough. Um, so one of the people they wanted for Ambassador Stevens, his name is Adele al Shalali, and he was a Libyan on death row in Iraq. And he um, was a very close friend of Abu Musab al Zarqawi. He actually after his death, he went back to Iraq and he was a terrorist gonna carry out the, um, the post-death attack in honor of Zarqawi and he got caught and that way he was in jail. So he was pretty upsetting to Al-Qaeda, right? Cause he was the one that was gonna do the t attack in honor of his death. So that's basically the main Libyan they were gonna ask for. They were gonna throw in some other names. Who's, he's who they wanted, but they were gonna of course ask for the blind sheikh. They were gonna, um, asked for Abu Faraj al-Libi, he's in Gitmo. And then they were thinking about maybe asking for Fia Siddiqui. I wanna say she's in maybe Texas. Um, so anyway, he passed it off to AQIM. AQIM's leader, his name is Drukdal. He gave it to um, Mokdo Bomokdar, we're gonna call him MBM. His expertise is kidnapping operations. So he said, you mastermind this, you carry it out. But I'm going to play a heavy, heavy hand because both of them were very close to Zawahiri. And Zawahiri said, this is super important to me. So Zawahiri asked them. He reached out to AQAP and said, hey, you guys help fund this. He also, AQAP um, out in Yemen, issued the fatwa that uh, made it legal 
to even do the Benghazi attack. Um, and then Zawahiri reached back to a bunch of people in Egypt. Hey, you need to support this. One had just got released from prison was Zawahiri's brother. And he, at the time, was negotiating to set up al-Qaeda in Egypt. Zawahiri's like, yeah, great. Benghazi's your first operation. So all these Zawahiri people come together to do this operation, and they plan it. And the commander on the ground that leads the attack is Omar al Shalali, Adele's brother. So, the, so that's the attack commander, and he's AQIM's head for Libya in 2012. So that's kind of who's now planning it, right? Mm -hmm. They brought in 150 terrorists just for the ambassador's kidnapping. So half of them went on the compound and half of them cordoned off the street. So 150 terrorists. I mean, I don't even know if I can name any terrorist attack with extra 150 terrorists. And at least in our book, at least 50 of them are Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda, and then the others are Al-Qaeda affiliates. So I'm not even sure I can name an attack with 50 Al-Qaeda terrorists at the attack. So, so you need to understand this attack is massive. And these are well-trained guys. This oh, yes. isn't, these aren't yes. bottom of the barrel yeah. Minions. And These we, are <laughs> we very um, painstakingly made that clear. We walked through their entire history. So if they fought in the Afghanistan Mujahideen time, they're in there as that. If they fought in Iraq, in our Iraq wars, which started around 2003, 2004, they're in that. In between those two, though, that a lot of people forget is the Algerian Civil War. You know, 200,000 civilians were killed in that war. I had no yeah, idea. It was an insane jihad thing, and it always gets ignored. But so we had people fight in that war, and that's where MBM, MBM was in Afghanistan fighting, and then the Algerian Civil War kicked off, and he jumped ship and went there, and that's kind of where he got most of his bona fides. They weren't actually in, Pakistan, in Afghanistan, what a lot of people think. And then, um, and then um, the Libyan revolution. And then after Benghazi attacks, they went to Syria, as you can imagine. So yeah, well-trained terrorists. Um, pretty much every senior leader Zawahiri reached out to, either him or bin Laden or Zarqawi, had a long time established relationship with him. There's not even one person that Zawahiri chose that had no experience. Actually, really the only senior leader at the attacks that had no experience is crazy. So MBM like took over this random village. I want to say it was like in Algeria. And he recruited a businessman to be like a terrorist during his takeover of the city. And the guy spoke fluent English. And so he said, I want you to be the commander of my attack of my cell of AQIM. AQIM had multiple cells, so I don't want to get complicated with that, because you speak English and I want you to um, talk to the ambassador. And they also recruited two Canadians to the attack. So three people were supposed to be the English speakers to kind of do the shifts to take care of the ambassador when they brought him in. Interesting. Yeah, so, so anyway, so that's kind of who they're going up against. Um, resources brought to bear, I mean, Let's just first talk about the first two deaths, right? So that's the ambassador and Sean Smith, right? The only kind of resource to bring that to bear is if CIA would have left the compound sooner. And I don't know if you actually know why they didn't leave till 10.05. Why? Because Bob lied to them and told them 17 February was responding when he knew they weren't. Even Mark still thinks 17 February, he ran into him during that night. That actually never happened. They thought they were running into 17 February because Bob lied to them and said they were responding, but they never did. On Bob's first phone call to the head of Fe 17 February, his name was Fauzi Bukatif. He said, I'm not, I don't have any help to send you. I'm not sending you any help tonight. Bob is? This chief of base for Benghazi. Bob, that means Bob is the head agency staffer that's in, the in charge city. of Benghazi. Yes. So he, so obviously CIA has a QRF, right? GRS. That's mm -hmm. how normal places work. Mm -hmm. Bob viewed, he did not believe in our QRF or believe we had a QRF or believe they should be used as a QRF in a weird way. And he only viewed 17 February as his QRF. So there's already kind of a disconnect from how CIA operates in Benghazi just solely because of Bob. So Bob only wanted 17 February to respond. He never wanted his people to respond. So he calls 17 February, and 17 February, who sent maybe 25 terrorists to the attacks, they're involved. 
we don't know they're involved, right? He says, I'm not sending anyone. He's not going to send people to go attack his own people. Bob then is kind of like taken aback because he doesn't want to send his people. And then the one guy he counted on just said, I'm not sending people. So he lies to his team and says, hey, we're waiting on 17 Feb to respond. He spent some time begging them, but he knows they're not responding. He was told the first phone call to them. So the guys finally leave when the State Department guy says, if you don't come now, we're going to die. That's why they left. So it was nothing. They just said, screw it. And they just abandoned the COB. But he could have held them there all night because he could have kept lying that 17 Feb was doing a response. 17 Feb never responded with even one body to the Benghazi attacks. Hey, everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.